All right, hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about life maintenance versus a life generating life versus death versus what's healthy and what isn't. We're going to be talking about expansion and when expansion is good and when expansion is not so good. And yeah, the, the point of today's video, the reason that I wanted to make it is because I know that, especially around here, we have talked a lot about how our constant quest for expansion and growth and more at any cost is costing us something as a humanity. And we've talked a lot about how the biggest kind of rebellion we can make from our systems that are destructive right now is to figure out what our enough is and then to let ourselves stay there, to let ourselves rest in that, to let ourselves maintain that and live in that and find joy in that if we can. Because again, we, we are understanding that so much of what is driving the painful and the unhelpful and the harmful ways of being that are occurring in our cultural systems today is coming from this constant idea that we need to be expanding and growing and taking on more and doing more at all costs. And again, remember that the way that this is sold to us most of the time is that we are constantly in a state of being convinced and being told that we are not enough how we are, that our life is not good enough, that what we're achieving is not good enough, that what we have is what is not good enough, that who we are is not good enough. And then culture continues to sell us solutions to this in terms of how to up-level your productivity, how to up-level your uh, capacity to consume. And it's just this vicious cycle that goes over and over and over again where trends are constantly changing and what is good and what is bad and what is in and what is out and what is seen as enough and what is seen as not enough is constantly changing. So we are constantly in a state of feeling unsettled and feeling like we're not doing the right thing and feeling like we're failing at life. And then again, right, the, the constant solution that's sold to us over and over and over again is to do more, to be more, to take on more, to be able to buy more, to more, 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 more. More is always the answer. And then of course on the flip side, we also have a lot of people who in our society are not able to create a life where they have actually enough for themselves. And they aren't able to get to a place of relative security. And, and so that true discontent and that true not having enough is then usually blamed on them. Right? Like our, our cultures tend to lean towards the idea that if you don't have enough, if you're not secure, if you're not, you know, living a life where everything is working out for you, that you are doing something wrong, that you are deserving of that on some level because there's a narrative that there's abundance all the time. And it really does look like that. Like when we look at our capitalist societies, like right corporate growth <laughs> when we look at it we can see that there's just like this it seems like this endless capless expansion more 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 the wealthy are just getting wealthier they're just creating more things they're expanding companies and like i say we're kind of indoctrinated into this idea that more is always available there is always more there and if you aren't accessing it that if you aren't experiencing that that there's something wrong with you, that you are doing something wrong. But when we take a step back and we really look at how our systems are created and we look at how that constant expansion is able to happen and how that constant expansion has always been able to happen, we're always going to see that exploitation is necessary, that poverty is necessary, that people not having access to reasonable upward mobility is necessary, right? That corporations are not going to pay living wages. They're not going to give benefits. They're not going to create social security for their workers. They're not going to create working conditions where people can have a reasonable sense of life. 
because that would cut into the profits of the people at the top and that would cut into how much they can spend and how much they can allocate to expansion. You see? So in order for this constant expansion to be happening, there has to be an exploitation of people who don't have enough and then who are kind of forced into labor that isn't going to afford them a reasonable life. And then again, they are going to be blamed as being the reason why that is happening. And that's just like a general overview and a general kind of statement. But again, it's this constant under this understanding that the, the constant not enough narrative, the constant you are not enough, you are not producing enough, you are not consuming enough, you are not doing enough, that is how the middle class of workers is exploited into continually working themselves into a state of overwork, how they are exploited into participating in these systems, how we are exploited into literally gaslighting ourselves and gaslighting each other into you should be doing more, you should be wanting more, why aren't you going for more, what's wrong with you that you aren't pursuing more, all of this stuff to keep the system going because again we're taught that this is what makes somebody good, that this is what makes somebody worthy, that this is what makes a good life and then of course right the idea that so much of the relief that we find from participating in the systems of constant expansion and growth as the middle class is the promise of luxury and wealth and so much more than we need and being able to access things like therapy or self-care and all that stuff in order to recover from the overproductive state that we have to constantly be in to be in the middle class and to be succeeding in the middle class as though that is the answer, right? So understanding that the two ways of being that we are allowed to be as human beings in our culture is either in a state of production or in a state of consumption. And in order to be in a state of consumption, you have to do adequate production. And adequate production for most of us is too much. We get overwhelmed, we get tired, we get exhausted. And then we're told, don't worry, take a break, get therapy, all of these things, but you have to have money in order to do that. You see what I'm saying? So it can get really confusing to look at this and to think, so what's the answer? What do we do? How do we make this better? And for me, as someone who's kind of observing and who's someone who's in the middle class and has always been in the middle class, I can see that a huge part of the answer is for a lot of us in the middle class to stop taking more than we need. And we've talked about that on this channel a lot. This idea of finding our enough and not going for more. We don't need the bigger house. We don't need the second vehicle. We don't need the up level promotion. We don't need the next biggest vacation. We don't need to be buying the next handbag and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And, and seeing where we can, we can exist in a state of being totally okay and, and maybe even being better than the people around us when we pull back from the overconsumption and the overproduction, but then having to work through the social stigma that comes with that, right? So this is a big part of why finding our enough is so challenging. This is a big part of why finding our enough is so challenging because it comes with social stigma and it comes with social pressure and it comes with social antagonism and it comes with a lot of guilt and shame and being left out and being judged and being criticized because you're not doing what everyone else is doing. You aren't continuing to c try <laughs> to expand and have more and do more and be more and be ambitious. And in our culture, that is seen as a weakness. That is seen as a flaw. That is seen as something that makes you not good enough. And, and again, part of the way that we sort of, 
as a culture, I think unintentionally, gaslight each other into continuing on participating in these systems that are not healthy for any of us is through this idea that to pull back and not be as productive as possible and not be keeping up with trends and doing what everyone else is doing is like a moral failure. And, and we judge each other and we, we criticize each other and we look at people who aren't doing that and we have a visceral reaction of like, oh, that's not good enough. That's not safe. That's not okay. And, and a lot of the time, we don't even realize that that's our own indoctrination talking. That we get scared when we see other people not participating in the system. Because it represents rejection to us. It represents not being accepted, not being approved of, not getting our needs met. Because remember, Forever, forever, forever. So long as we've been alive, the very first program we ever got was that acceptance and approval equals having my needs met. Because that was true in the codependent reality of our early childhoods. When we could not provide for ourselves, our caregivers had to provide for us everything we needed, the whole entire way that we got our needs met was through being understood and empathized with and then provided for by our caretakers. And it appeared to us that the best way to ensure that we were gonna be taken care of was to be approved of by them, was to be liked by them, was to be what they wanted us to be. Because it appeared to us that it was our behavior that it was determining whether our caregivers provided for us or not. A lot of the time this isn't true in real reality, right? Our caregivers were not omnipresent, they were not omnipotent, they didn't have everything that they possibly needed or could have need to meet all of our needs, they weren't perfect people. But to us, in our infantile childhood state, it would have appeared to us that they were. And therefore, if they weren't providing for us, if they weren't loving us, if they weren't giving us what they needed, what we needed, it was because we were doing something wrong. And then that has evolved into our adult view of the world. That in order to be safe, in order to be okay, in order to have our needs met, we all deeply feel like we have to be approved of, we have to be accepted, we have to be part of the group. And when we're not, when we're ostracized, when we're judged, when we're criticized, it goes beyond just feeling like shitty that we're being judged and ostracized and criticized. It goes beyond just feeling not that good. And it, it goes into that territory of feeling like we're going to die, of feeling like we're not safe, of feeling like we're not going to be able to be okay. Because again, we're so deeply programmed that rejection is going to equal death. So therefore, to try to come up against a system, to try to do anything different than what everyone else is doing, to try to take ourselves out of the systems of continual con consumption and production and feeling like we aren't enough. It's so much more difficult than just saying, I'm going to downscale or I'm not going to try and buy the latest handbag or whatever. When we actually try to shift our lifestyles to be more conducive to a sustainable way of life, we are so often going to feel like we're going to die and we're also going to feel and receive the criticism and the judgment and the gatekeeping of people around us because they are being triggered by us doing something different. They are being triggered into everyone's not doing the same thing and then that makes me feel like maybe what I'm doing isn't the right thing, right? We have to understand this that when we do something different, when anyone does something different than what everyone else is doing, it immediately triggers everyone around us to attack because there's, again, this instinct that if we're not all doing the same thing, one of us is wrong. One of us is bad. It can't be that there are different ways. It can't be that we can do things different. It's that there's one way to be, and either I'm right or you're right, and if you're right, that means I'm wrong, 
which means I'm unsafe, which means I'm not going to be accepted, which means I'm not going to be loved, which means I'm not going to be approved of, and I don't want to deal with that. Or it would mean I have to question what I believe about society or what's good or any of these things, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to attack you to separate myself from you, and I'm going to attack you, because, right, if you're different, you're probably going to get rejected. So to save myself, I need to separate myself from you. And then also, I need to separate myself from what you're doing so that I can label it as wrong and I can figure out how it's bad and I can figure out why it's shameful. So then that is then reinforcing that what I'm doing is correct and you are wrong, I am safe, you are the thing, and I'm going to dissociate from you. So we're all going to experience this idea that when we start to question society, when we start to look at the systems and we say, okay, maybe this isn't great, maybe expansion at all costs isn't the right thing, maybe I don't need to be constantly taking more from myself, maybe, and this is a hard one <laughs> for a lot of us, especially in the spirituality, self-help, personal growth world, maybe I'm not failing to live my life purpose or failing to live up to what I should be doing if I'm not constantly in a state of expansion. Because again, this hyper-consumption, hyper-productivity thing is not just for people who are in the kind of regular world, who are you know climbing the corporate ladder or trying to buy the bigger house or trying to have more kids or trying to you know level up in the more mainstream way. We see this just as much and maybe even more in the spirituality, self-help, personal growth world, where people are seemingly trying to convince themselves that they are counterculture, that they are counter to what everyone else is doing. But in real reality, they also feel the constant need to be helping more people, expanding their healing business, expanding their relationships, leveling up in their spirituality, and in so doing, are forcing themselves into states of hyperproduction and hyperconsumption in order to maintain that, right? Like their health, it's never good enough. So they need the next supplement. They need the next this. They need the next this workout. They need the next this. They're bye, 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 bye. All of these things. You have to go to the next healing retreat. You got to go do the next plant medicine. You need the next shaman. You need the next therapy so that you're constantly leveling up. You need the next relationship seminar and the relationship coach and then more relationship. Do you see what I'm saying? This, you always need to be leveling up in order to be doing the right thing, is just as much a part of the spirituality, self-help, personal growth world as it is the, the mainstream. Just this message that who and what you are is never good enough, that what you're doing is never good enough, is the thing that's driving the extreme destruction we see on this planet. And like I say, I know this is really hard, especially for the spirituality, self-help, personal growth community, because there's so many messages that tell us, right? We just need more money in the hands of good people. It's spiritual to be rich. You should be manifesting more wealth and more abundance and more luxury for yourself. And that is a sign that you're doing the right thing. You should be taking on more so that you can, you know, give more sessions or host retreats or doing all these things and you need to be constantly leveling up your life. It's not okay to find a maintenance and to stay there. You always have to be leveling up. And again, right, a lot of the spirituality, self-help, personal growth people make that about purpose and doing what we should be doing and this is spiritual when really it's just a constant drive a constant stress, a constant I'm not enough. It's the exact same thing that every corporate lawyer is doing, but we're saying it's different because we're hosting plant medicine retreats. But it isn't different. The energy and the what is required for people to continually be taking on more and doing more and expanding more is the exact same effect. Someone and something is always being sacrificed when we are expanding beyond our actual potential to find regulation in what we're doing. Someone and something is always going to be sacrificed when we are expanding beyond 
our capacity to do what we're doing regulated and without asking other people and other things to sacrifice themselves for our expansion. No matter if your business is the most spiritual, purpose-focused thing on the planet, if it's too much, if it's too much, there's going to be exploitation and pain of you, of the people you work with, of the land. Something and someone is always going to have to be sacrificed. And I don't think that enough people are asking themselves if I expand into this next thing, if I buy the new property, if I take on the next medicine retreat, if I take on more clients, if I do all this stuff, what needs to be sacrificed in order for that to happen? What needs to be exploited in order for that to happen? Who ha- who's gonna lose out in order for that expansion to take place? And is that a worthy trade-off? Who am I going to be asking to sacrifice themselves so that I can continue to do this thing? And that's a real serious question I think a lot of us in the spirituality, self-help, personal growth world need to start to ask ourselves when we're looking to expand into what we think we need to expand into. Is it really our spiritual purpose and our spiritual call Or is it just the system dressed up in a new age costume? These are big questions we need to ask ourselves. Okay? So this gets me into that point of, again, when we start to pull back, when we start to say, I'm going to do an actual audit of where I have enough, where I am enough, where I am doing good enough, where I am in reality, pragmatically safe, this is fine. When I start to do that audit and I start to admit where I don't need to expand anymore, that's when we really have to start to do that self-love work that helps us get through everyone judging us, and telling us that we're not doing what we should be doing, that we're not spiritual, that we're not expanding enough, that we're not ambitious enough, that we're not doing enough, that we're not living our purpose enough, because we're not continuing to keep going for more and more and more where it's literally not necessary, or where again, we could do it, but when we are getting honest about what would need to be sacrificed, we can say that's not actually a good sacrifice. People are going to judge that. And that's the big hard part on the inner work that needs to be done. That's why the mystery school is there. That's why this self-love work is there. Because it's one thing to intellectually understand pulling back and not going for more and not trying to expand. It's a whole other thing to actually be able to do it in the face of judgment. And even when we aren't receiving direct judgment, we need to understand that because of the way we've been indoctrinated, because of the way all of us have been trained to see morality, we have been trained that doing more and expanding into more and being ambitious and all of these things are a moral imperative in our Western culture. Expansion at all costs has been moralized as a good, heroic thing to do. That when we decide we're going to not do that so much, our internal self is going to freak out. And it's going to say, I'm not good. I'm not doing good enough. I'm failing. I should be doing more. This isn't okay. Because our conditioning is going to be telling us that. Even if no one around us is telling us that, we are probably going to feel that way. And again, that's why this self-love work is so challenging. Because we have to be able to question the programs and the stories we received about what is good and bad, right and wrong. Which is a whole layer deeper 
than am I doing good and am I doing bad? Right? A lot of us continually struggle with the am I doing good or am I doing bad? But we don't take the time to assess where did my definition of good and bad come from? Is what I have been told is good actually pragmatically good? Is what I have been told is bad actually pragmatically bad? Where did these definitions of good and bad come from? And do they align with real reality? Where is the expansion no longer worth what is being sacrificed? And again, this is really hard in the Western culture where a lot of the time what is sacrificed is something we don't see. We don't see the people who aren't making a living wage at their job that we benefit from. We don't see the child labor that's happening in other countries so that we can enjoy cheap clothing or whatever it is. We don't see the people who are being held out of spaces where they could access education, of places where they could access upward mobility, of places where they could access reasonable qualities of life so that we can have more than we need and more than we want and we can keep expanding. Yeah? It's really challenging to, to get ourselves to look at these things because it's intentionally hidden from us. But this is why I think a lot of us in the spirituality, self-help, personal growth world feel how we feel about society but don't know why we feel that way. Right? Like how many of you out there watching this have felt like society sucks and have felt like things are not good? And, and when you can kind of take a step back and feel like you're able to find some space between maybe how I'm feeling isn't because I suck and you're able to find that self-compassion, there's still that deep feeling in you of like, this isn't right and I don't like it and I don't want to participate and I don't really know why I don't really understand all I know is it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good and now again right a lot of us are a lot more aware now as to why that is right the systems we're operating in and why things are so shitty but like I remember in 20, 2010 when I first moved out of my parents' house and I was making my way in the world, I remember just thinking like, this, this isn't gonna work. Like, this doesn't work, this is not sustainable. I was in the middle class and I had access to education. I had access to upward mobility if I wanted to work really hard and do that. I had access to all of these things and I didn't know why at the time it all still felt so horrible because I wasn't aware of the racism and, and all of the ways in which society was set up to benefit me at the expense of other people. I didn't see that at the time, but I felt it. I knew something was wrong. I knew it didn't work. I could see the people not earning living wages. I could see that it wasn't fair. And, and especially in the spirituality and the self-help and the personal growth world, I could see how people were spiritually bypassing that and saying, right, like, well, if, if you're not rich and you're not abundant, that's your fault. You're manifesting it. Increase your vibration. That, and, it, and again, I just kept thinking, like, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem true. Because there are so many people who I look and it feels like they're working really hard. And it feels like they're doing a lot of things. But it doesn't seem like they have the same ability to create for themselves a good life. Like it just seems hard. And no matter what they do, it seems like it's going to be hard. And, and so again, there was a lot for me where I just got to a place of like, I can't do this. I don't understand this. And, and I know that I can't keep up. I know that I can't keep up. And then, you know, finding out that I was chronically ill and finding out all of these other things, 
also really kind of clarified things of like, well, yeah, I was never going to be able to keep up. I was never going to be able to do what everyone else was doing in terms of leveling up and working hard and hustling and grinding because I like physically couldn't keep up. And so there was all of that. But the other thing that I really was starting to witness in all of this was that the people who were in that state of like constantly up leveling their consumption and I I guess what I want to say here is more when once I started to question it once I started to say okay but why is this good and why are we all doing this and what is this all for I could start to see that again the people who were going for more and who were constantly trying to level up and they were ambitious and all, all this stuff it all seemed to be to a very selfish end. It all seemed to be for, so they could get the bigger house and they could get the bigger car and they could get the second car and they could have the vacations and they could do all this stuff. And I kept just thinking like, okay, great. But then everyone just looked so exhausted. Everyone just looked all the time like, sure you have all this stuff, but now you have to maintain it, right? Like now, you have to either continue to work at this level to continue to get this income so that you can afford the house, so that you can afford the car, so that you can afford all of these things. And then you either need to pay someone to maintain it, which means you need to be working even more, or you need to be spending the energy to maintain it, which means now you're working a full-time job and more, and then you have kids, and then you have to, on the weekend, you have to take care of the lawn, you gotta fix the house, you gotta do all this. And I was like, what is all of this for? Like, is anyone actually experiencing joy because of any of this? It, are people really enjoying all of this expansion that they're constantly being goaded and shamed and guilted into having to do all the time in order to be good? Like, what is the point of having the four bedroom house, of having the eight bedroom house? What is the point of the designer clothing? What is the point of the new shiny hair and nails all the time? Like, it all just felt like effort upon effort upon effort upon effort to look good in a society where looking good basically just means you have lots of money. And why? Yeah, and then beyond that, just seeing, I was like, and then it looks like the whole like social structure of it is so superficial and so cutthroat and everyone's just there for like what can you do for me and how can we collaborate to level up maybe but also mostly just competition and then it just seemed like everyone was so lonely and like disconnected and it just started to really get to this point of like what are we doing all this for this is so much work to get to a place where your life is constant life maintenance so this is the the big thing that i've seen that I really want to point to in this talk, which is life maintenance. There is a difference, in my opinion, between truly healthy life maintenance and life maintenance where we've gone too far. Okay, so part of the thing that made me really allergic to the Western culture, like I said, was this observation that everyone was just in life maintenance mode all the time. In other words, everyone got to this point where they essentially like worked themselves to their maximum expansion point and then bought all the things and had all the things and were doing all the things you need to do in culture to look good and to look right and to look like you're doing the right thing. And then the rest of their life was just a constant, never ending, every single day being the same to try to maintain it. To maintain the lawn, maintain the house, get groceries, do, get your hair done, do your nails, be on top of makeup trends, be on top of clothing trends. And it was just this constant, like I said, just wheel of efforting to just maintain this image and to maintain this life where I was, again, like, where is the enjoyment in that? What, what are we doing this for? Okay, you look good, you have all the things, but do you even enjoy it? Do you even have time or energy to enjoy any of these things? 
or are you just constantly in a state of trying to keep it all going to keep it up and then eventually you get a vacation once or twice a year and then you're so exhausted on that vacation you just get smashed or whatever and then you have to go back to your life and I kept thinking this life maintenance doesn't make any sense and then for me it was like it really appeared to me like you're either gonna be able to like expand your consciousness and expand your spirituality and expand into like deeper things in this life or you're gonna expand into the world and it really appeared to me that you couldn't really do both and I know too that for a lot of people spiritual access like having access to classes and retreats and all these things comes from having a lot of money and I get that and I think a lot of the time that kind of spirituality is shallow the kind that you can only get because you can afford it oftentimes isn't true spirituality it's not really nourishing you it's not going to be helping you to really realize what you need because in order to have it you have to be disconnected from your humanity so that was really what I was saying seeing was that this life maintenance life of I've expanded to the maximum that I can expand I'm working as hard as I can work I'm earning as much money as possible I'm as ambitious as possible and then I have all the stuff and then you go on the spiritual retreat, whatever. But in order to have that life, again, like I said, you really have to be sacrificing your humanity. You have to be sacrificing your humanity in that you're constantly in this state of overproducing and overconsuming and worrying about how you look and playing the social game. And that is a disconnection of your humanity. And then you have to be disconnected from all the ways in which that lifestyle is exploitative and harmful and costs something of other humans and the earth so then you go on your spiritual retreat and you do whatever you can afford the classes but I'm just seeing I'm witnessing people they don't feel fulfilled and again that kind of spirituality is almost always a bypassy spirituality it's not deep and it's not true so I was seeing just in my own personal life, in my own opinion, again, and I don't want to shame anybody, and I don't want to say that like going on an expensive retreat or whatever isn't real spirituality ever, because I know that it can be. I just want to say generally speaking, we need to question this again. Like if in order to have the spirituality that, you, that only comes to you because you can afford it, can we question that a little bit? Can we question that system a little bit? Is that really what we think it is? Is it giving us what we think it is? Because again, we can all go to a yoga class and, and feel all inside of ourselves. and But what is that connecting us to? And it's making us feel good about ourselves, but about what? And it's easy to be in a state of feeling like you're in this like transcended place when you're not looking at the world and you're not looking at the systems and you're not thinking about what it means you see and when you're and when you're in the in group because that's the other big thing that I've seen about like especially Western spirituality that it's very clicky and it's very much just again another place where you have to look the part and you have to have the right clothes and the right way to talk and the right way to be and it's just like what, what is this for? What is this giving you other than a feeling of being included? Yeah? So then, like I said, I was seeing that there was that kind of life maintenance. And that kind of life maintenance seemed to be, to me, in my opinion, something that required us to disconnect from our spirituality and to disconnect from our humanity and to disconnect from any kind of like deeper inner personal growth because that whole life is so superficial and it's it it it's about how it looks it's about what's going on on the surface and so we do have to sacrifice 
so much of the deeper things of life in order to do that. Versus what I think of as healthy life maintenance. Like life maintenance that is really actually a part of true expansion and growth. Okay, because this life maintenance feels like we're constantly behind the eight ball. We're constantly behind. We're constantly behind the trend. We're constantly not enough. We're constantly not this. And we're just trying to keep our heads above water. Whereas I feel like when we can find true life maintenance that is actually fortifying and nourishing, it's the kind of life maintenance that actually helps us grow. So now here's the other thing, right? I think we've seen a lot of people who feel like like real growth and real expansion and real change isn't possible. And that people don't really change and that people don't really grow and that putting in consistent effort over time doesn't actually give us good results. And I think that a lot of people think that way and feel that way because in real in normal society that's true it's really actually true you don't really get anywhere doing your life maintenance in normal society because we're all so maxed out and because it's all so superficial and because it's like literally built on the idea of debt just in every way possible it's like you're already behind by just starting and, and again, in order to keep up appearances and in order to be doing what everyone else is doing, in order to be expanding, like even in the like pseudo spirituality world where you're constantly expanding your business and expanding your practice and trying to be more and more and more and more and more, you don't get anywhere. It's just constant effort to either stay where you are or fall behind because that's how the system keeps you in it. If you were to actually get ahead and actually see growth and actually expand, you would no longer be vulnerable to how that system sells you on staying into it. You would start to check out and that would be bad for the system and that is why you have to be constantly not making real progress constantly in a state of feeling like you're reset Groundhog Day every day. It's never enough. It's never good enough. You never get anywhere. Because that's how they keep you in it. That's how they keep you in a constant state of overproduction and overconsumption and feeling like it's your fault and feeling like change doesn't work. And then, right, they sell you self, like uh, quick fixes and things that promise to make you feel healthy in 30 days or fix your relationship in 15 minutes or up level with this spiritual retreat that you just have to go once and then you're going to be enlightened. They sell us all this stuff because again, we're all so overwhelmed. The putting in the constant effort and the constant eff action doesn't actually get us anywhere. We're exhausted, we're tired, and we just want to feel better. And so then when they sell us the quick fixes that don't work, we want them, we're, we go for it, we think that has to be the only thing that's r real because we've experienced that trying to do things at a moderate pace and, and change over time doesn't do anything because in the superficial world, it doesn't. And then, like I say, we're just trapped in this cycle over and over and over and over and over again. Whereas when we get into real life maintenance, here's what I want to say. When we're doing things that are truly nourishing for us, that are actually fulfilling some need in us, when we are maintaining our lives in a way where we have practices every day that maintain our bodies, that maintain our spiritual practice, that we will not be stagnant and we will not be falling behind. The everyday life maintenance stuff will be slowly moving us forward. In real, true spirituality, growth, expansion, most of the time, growth and expansion comes slowly, over time, 
with consistent maintenance effort that is actually growth effort. It comes slowly over time with consistent maintenance effort that is actually growth effort. You should be seeing that your meditation practice over the years is changing the way that you see your life and the way that you see it yourself and the way that you interact. You should be seeing that the little revelations you get in your spiritual practice aren't these big like my whole life flashes before my eyes and then I have to make all these changes and I can't and I can't maintain it and I fall off and then I have to do the retreat again and then I fall off and then retreat again and then fall off. It shouldn't be like that. A real spiritual practice is going to show you just enough that you can actually act on. And then you have to take little steps and you have to make little changes. And it's a bit uncomfortable and it's a bit scary. And you do that over and over and over and over again. And over a year, over two years, over three years, your life is totally different. And you look back and you think, well, what did it? Because there wasn't like a big thing that I did. And it's like the big thing you did was you showed up for your practices every single day and they actually nourished you and they actually expanded you and they actually brought you to a new place over time. That is true life maintenance. And like I said, in order to find that, in order to find the time to be able to do the meditation practices, the yoga practices, the nourishment practices, the self-love work, the community work, the work we do in our relationships and working on communication and all that stuff. That requires energy and it requires effort and it requires time. That if we're investing all of it in keeping up with society, we aren't going to have the time and the energy and the, and the ability to do these things left over. We can do one or the other. And I think it's, it's not because we're weak or anything like this. It's because there are only so many hours in the day. There's only so much energy we have. And in order to invest in your future progress, you can't be participating in the breakneck speed of constant expansion and growth that society tells us we should be participating in. You just can't. There's not enough energy left to go around. So real life maintenance, where we do just these little practices every day, take us forward. They expand us. They do change our lives. That is what a growth path actually looks like. A real growth path is one where your life maintenance is taking you forward every single day. You're not in a state of constant running around like a chicken with your head cut off, trying to expand your life at all costs. That's not growth. You're not in a place where you're necessarily trying to be as minimal as possible and take as little as possible and do as little as possible. That's black and white thinking. We need to, to find true life maintenance, which is actually a life generating path. Right? Because again, remember, true life maintenance is nourishing. True life maintenance is taking you forward slowly, over time, one step at a time. It's nourishing you and it's giving you the capacity to take the little steps and to do the little things that over time really do make a difference to your experience of this life. Real life maintenance is expansion. But in order to create that, we first have to get clear on what we actually want, what's actually important, what we should and should not be investing our time in. And a lot of the time, that is going to lead to us realizing that we need to divest from a lot of things. And that's hard and that's scary. Because for all the reasons we said, right? We're going to be judged. We're going to be criticized. People aren't going to believe that what you're doing is going to be something good for you. 
because they've never seen slow, steady effort equaling something good over time. Most people have no experience with that. They only know you work really, 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 really hard and either it works right now or it doesn't work. Or you work really, really, really hard and you have the big house and you have the thing and then you just are running the rest of your life to keep up. Because it's never enough and it never can be enough. Because remember, our economy would crash if any of us ever felt like we were enough. It would crash for many reasons. It would crash because we would stop over consuming and it would crash because we would demand better, fairer treatment. Living wages, we would demand actual benefits. We would stop being gaslit into this idea that sacrificing ourselves is a noble thing. We would stop seeing the sacrifice of our humanity for our systems as the right thing to do. And we would stop seeing us taking advantage of systems that require exploitation so that we can have more than we need as being success. And then we have to redirect our focus to something else. So again, I'm not saying you need to meditate or you need to do yoga or that there's like a specific way that life is supposed to be lived in order for it to be life generating. This is why, right? I don't sit here up here and say, everyone needs to quit their job and move to Asia. Because that is not true. That's not real. That is not what is right for everybody. I'm not saying that everyone needs to eat a certain way or that everyone needs to do a certain practice or whatever it is. What I'm saying is, can we start to take a step back and really question why we're doing what we're doing? Why do we think we need more? Why are we expanding into the things we're expanding into? And then what are we having to sacrifice in order to make that expansion happen? This is a huge question we need to ask ourselves. What is being sacrificed for that expansion to happen and is that worth it? And then we need to look at do I have reasonable amounts of time in my day to invest in the things that are going to actually grow me as a human being? Because again, a lot of us are in a position where we are just trying to keep our heads above water and that's not fair. We're just trying to survive is so hard because our systems are so fucked up. So that that's, I'm not talking about that right now. I'm not like you're failing if you're just like trying to do your three jobs so that you can like have a reasonable sense of life. That's, I'm not saying you're failing and you're doing something wrong. That's not true. I'm saying for those of us in the middle who can, who do have the luxury of time and space to say, I could divest from these things. I don't need to keep doing these things. I could sacrifice the nails and the hair and the, the keeping up with the Joneses and the keeping up with the trends and the, all the time I need to be on social media to try to like regulate myself after working so hard to be good enough. What if I started to invest some of that time in real, actual life maintenance practices? Nervous system regulation moving my body in a way that's actually healthy for my body. Doing these things that, again, over time. And it, you might not be a spiritual person at all, and that's fine. And it's, and it's still, again, the question of how are you nourishing yourself? And where can you step back from the rat race so that you can actually build life maintenance? That's true life nourishment over time so that you start to reap rewards instead of being in this constant state of feeling like you're not enough because the system is just never going to give us what it says it's going to give us. That's my point. To just constantly invest all of our time and our energy into it because it's promising us that it's going to give us something on the other side, that's the, sh that's the sham.
at best it can give you luxury but it can't give you connection it can't give you real spirituality it can't give you your humanity so is the sacrifice of those things for luxury or for clout or for fitting in worth it and if not what is worth it and then again doing the work to be able to divest without that being so bad and hard and scary on our nervous systems come join the mystery school come work with me in whatever way you need to work with me work with other self-love teachers work with other divesting teachers get help for doing that because it is a complete reprogram it's a completely different way of life right like a lot of people just with my life I know my life is like a completely different way of life than most people and I'm very privileged and I made choices right it's 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 not that I'm trying to like celebrate myself about about other people it's that like I did choose not to keep expanding I did choose to divest I chose to leave in the ways that I needed to leave and again I'm not living in like a totally impoverished Asian nation so therefore I don't need money my cost of living here where I live is very similar to what it would be if I lived in my home country that's not what this is about I divested from the culture I divested from the ways of that people live so I can live a totally different way because I wanted something different and I just saw that the system was never going to give it to me so I don't keep up the trends I don't look how I'm supposed to look I don't do the things and I'm fine and I, I guarantee you that you can probably be okay too so w this is what we're doing we're looking for the life maintenance life that's actually growth because it's actually nourishing us on some level and how we need to divest from the system in order to find those things because there just isn't enough energy in the day to be in the rat race or growing and then again we don't blame ourselves for all the places that we are in the rat race because all of us are in it to a degree I'm in it still to a degree there are still things that I have to do every day all but that aren't life generating because we have we all have to survive so there's no judgment in this there's no anyone is doing it better than anyone else it's not about that it's it's again it's it's really about you having compassion for yourself and asking yourself what you need to feel good in this life and then how you can move towards that it's about you questioning what the system is selling you it can give you that it's it can't and it won't you're not doing anything wrong and you're not doing anything bad and this is not about shaming anybody this is about realizing we were all sold a bill of goods we've all been indoctrinated that if you just fall in line with the system you will have what you want and what you need and you will be safe and everything will be good and that's a lie and it's not your fault so this this big thing no one is doing anything wrong and there's no wrong way to do this it's just assessing for yourself is what you're doing making you happy is it possible that there's a better way for you and then being able to actually go that way through that inner work of taking these steps that do make you different and will get you rejected and will get you misunderstood but will lead to something better there is no right way there is no way this should look it's all it's gonna look different on all of us and it's gonna look different on all of us all throughout the years a life maintenance life should continue to make your life look different year after year after year after year because there should be growth happening I am not doing the same things now that I was doing 10 years ago and I hope that I'm doing completely different things 10 years from now that I'm doing now but my practices are all still there right the daily yoga practice never stopped it's been there since I was 14 the meditation practice every single day since 2015 it, these things are there and they have continued to nourish me and continued to make my life different and taken me deeper and that's the point 
that's the life maintenance that actually creates growth. Instead of drowning in the life maintenance, where you're constantly feeling like you're not good enough, and you're not doing enough, and you're not expanding enough. So when we find our enough, that's when we can find true life maintenance that leads to real growth that might not look like financial growth or growth in your company or growth on the outside, but it'll be real growth, real meaningful internal growth, life growth, spirit growth, soul growth, personal growth. And you deserve that. So where you can divest so that you are not being sucked dry because that's what it is. I don't want you to feel like you're being selfish or wrong or bad for having a lot in our, it's, it's sucking you dry. You are the one being taken advantage of. Even when you start to realize that maybe some of the ways that you're living are a cause of exploitation, number one, you didn't create that system. You were indoctrinated into it. It's not your fault. And it's sucking you dry just as much as anyone else. So have compassion for yourself. Where can you divest so that you're not being sucked dry by this system that's constantly demanding more of you and not giving back to you anything of substance? Okay, so again, we, we really want to be careful that there's no shaming or blaming or guilting going on here. None of us invented these systems. We're all doing the best we can. I have blind spots. I know that I have things that I'm doing right now that are harmful, that are not good enough in terms of being life generating. And I know that. And I'm going to continue to grow and I'm going to continue to see it. I'm going to continue to change when I do see it. I am not perfect. I am not trying to stand here and say that I'm perfect. What I'm saying is to divest the way that we can divest. I divested the way that I could divest. I'm doing life maintenance the way that I can do life maintenance. And it has given me good results. And I want that for everybody in the way that you can, in the way that it will for you. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. It's just where are you being sucked dry and where can you pull out of the systems that are sucking you dry so that you can invest in things that are actually going to nourish you? That's the question. Because when you're being truly nourished, when your humanity is being truly nourished, you're going to be shifting your life in a way that supports the nourishment of everybody. That's how it works. Okay? So that's my talk on life maintenance versus life generating versus where expansion is good and all that stuff. Come join the mystery school. Again, this is, this is what this is about. It's this deeper, what is life really about? How do I find my connection? Enjoy my free content, all that stuff. Thank you for being here. I'll see you in the next video.